Hey, Brad. Hope all is well with you. Uh, just your thoughts on the task at hand of facing, obviously, a really good Nets team and uh, what you guys have to do to have success against them. Well, you got to make everything as difficult as possible. Um, it's easier said than done. There's, they're the kind of team that you know you're gonna, you're gonna have to um, challenge everything. You're gonna have to take care of the basketball. You're gonna have to sprint to take away any easy transition baskets. You're gonna have to take away easy baskets on cuts and rebounds, because if they are able to add up, you know, a number of easy baskets that way. Um, through their motor and energy and a lack of, um, you know, um, playing the right way on our part, then that then becomes, you know, all those other shots that they make become too much to overcome. So I think you have to first and foremost control those controllables as well as you can, then guard those guys as hard as you can. Um, there will be some tip your cap moments where you're going to have to, like, Nice shot and go down the other end and score. Um, and that's probably the other part about this for us is, you know, you're, you're not going to hold these guys to 90 or whatever the case may be. These guys are a high octane offense. You've got to guard them as hard as you can. And then you've got to go and score on the other end. Um, and, you know, obviously, again, it's pretty simple in that way, but just means you got to take your offensive possessions have to be very purposeful. Mark Murphy. Hey, Brad. Just how much does a team with that many weapons and that high quality of weapon complicate defensive rotations and also help defense? Well, I think in an ideal world, you want to stay out of rotations as much as possible. That's why people in, you know, all over the league have as many versatile defenders as they can. They switch all over the place and and then you try to limit the rotations because that's inevitably how teams get layups, threes, and rebounds. Um, that said, these guys force some of that um, with their outstanding individuals, right? Um, you know, Irving's ability to beat anybody in one-on-one -on -one situations is incredible. Um, Durant's ability to shoot over people and, and score any variety of ways. And then Harden's ability to both um, do that and, and, you know, lead the league in assists. Um, you know, they just have a lot of they, they draw a lot of attention for a reason. Um, and you have to balance that appropriately with um again, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have to decide as a team, are you gonna challenge and make it as difficult as possible, or are you gonna scramble all over the place? And they'll take advantage of you scrambling all over the place. And so I think you have to pick your spots wisely. Gary Washburn. Hey, Brad, um, you can kind of imagine the Nets at full strength, but they haven't been at full strength much this season. Uh, how, how tough is it to get video of them all together in terms of, I know we played seven games, but there's not a lot of, uh, you know, uh, video and stuff in terms of uh, you know, those guys playing all together. And then how's Robert Williams, did he, was he able to practice yeah. and, uh, what kind of practice is he making? Yeah, I think you balance watching what you can and then also recent trends of how they've played even without guys. Um, and then and then I think the other part of it is, is that, you know, like Kevin Durant cannot play for 25 games and you know what his go-to actions are and so does everybody else and he still scores, right? That's the, that's the, the, that's the special part of Kevin Durant um, and, and those other guys as well. So I think that that's, those are things that, you know, there's enough information. It's, you know, I'm sure just like we talked about before the Washington game. I mean, I think that they're probably thinking about how can they become as familiar with each other again and as quickly as possible. Robert Williams did not practice. He's still really sore. Um, you know, he'll continue to be day to day, but I can't imagine him practicing tomorrow based on how he was walking around today. Adam Hillsbach. Hey, Brad. Um, how would you describe uh, kind of what the experience is like coaching Kyrie and what you took away from it? And then also what have you thought of the year he had this year? Yeah, Kyrie's had an amazing year. Um, and, you know, he was amazing here. You know, he was second team all NBA is his second year and probably would have been first or second team his first year had he not gotten hurt. Um, 
and then missed the last 20% or 25% of the season. He, he is a um, super special player um, with a really good heart. And, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I don't have anything negative to say at all. He's a, uh, he's a guy that, um, you know, puts you on your heels when you're playing against him. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly is impacted winning in so many ways everywhere he's been. John Corrales. Brad, can you speak to the, the precision necessary to do all of the things that you need to do? You're talking about playing the right way. It's going to need a lot of, of, of precision. Do you have enough time to get enough reps to get that level of precision? Uh, I think that we, I think that we do. I think that sometimes that will require, you know, we just have to be very, we have to be very smart about how we play, you know, and again, that's to, you know, you, you want to, you want to maximize possessions. You can't, you can't throw away five possessions in a row against these guys um, because that becomes a 12 0 run really quickly. And um, again, they're so potent when, you're in front of them and challenging everything that if you let them have easy things because of a lack of doing our jobs well, then, you know, that's when, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to maintain touch. So you've got to do everything you can to maximize every possession. And, uh, and if you do that, you'll have, you know, you always have a chance and you're always in it. And then it's about making sure that you execute on both ends as well as you can. So that's the task. And, um, I mean, this is a fun challenge. Listen, it's uh, they're a heck of a team, but our guys are, you know, we have some guys in here that have been through some big time series before and have, you know, raised their level to meet the moment on several occasions. And so I'm really looking forward to it. Ryan Mahoney. Hey, Brad, you talked about obviously not being able to hold this team to 90. Um, do you know what, what do you think will be a good night against them? I remember a couple of years ago asking you with these offensive numbers if like 115 could be a good night, and you said there's really no such thing. But this team average, I think, it scores like about 118. Uh, if you hold them to 115 now this year, is that good? If we score 116. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap it up right there. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.